हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू इजी डेंटिस्ट्री टुडे वी वुड बी डिस्कसिंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज द प्रोफिलैक्सिस ऑफ एच आई इन्फेक्शन नाउ दिस टॉपिक यू शुड नो फॉर योर थियोरी एग्जाम्स इट इज ऑल्सो आस्ट इन योर वाइवा एंड ऑल्सो इन प्रैक्टिकल यू शुड नो वॉट प्रोफिलैक्सिस टू बी यूज इफ सम वन इज एक्सीडेंटली एक्सपोज टू एच आई वी इन्फेक्शन सो वॉच दिस लेक्चर केयरफुली now what is uh, the um, now all healthcare workers including we dentists are accidentally exposed to risk of hiv infection by a needle stick injury or through contact with the blood saliva or biological fluids of the hiv infected patient now what is this needle stick injury if you use a needle in an hiv infected patient and after the use of the needle in the hiv infected patient if you pierce the same needle to you then this kind of injury is called as the needle stick injury now let us study the post exposure prophylaxis or the pep of hiv infection now this pep or the post exposure prophylaxis is the treatment which should be followed after the exposure to hiv infection now aim of this pep is to suppress the local viral replication prior to dissemination so that infection is aborted so the suppression is done at a local level now pep pep is not uh, needed in certain conditions what are those conditions if the hiv infected blood comes in contact with your intact skin or the mucous membrane then pep is not needed then secondly if only few drops of blood get in contact with the with the intact skin and mucous membrane then the, in this condition pep is not new, needed and if the exposure is of sh very short duration then this post exposure prophylaxis is not needed now the national aids control organization has uh, recommended two regimen for the pep these two regimen depends upon the risk of hiv infection these two regimen are the basic regimen and the expanded regimen the basic regimen is a two drug regimen which is used in low risk patients these include zidovudine in a dose of 300 mg and lamivudine in the dose of 150 mg both these drugs are used two times a day for a duration of 4 weeks now the expanded regimen is a three drug regimen which is used in high risk patients and in this expanded regimen zidovudin lamivudin and an additional drug indinavir is used zidovudin in a dose of 300 mg lamivudin in 150 mg and indinavir 800 mg zidovudin and lamivudin for two times per day while indinavir for three times per day for a total duration of four weeks now how do you know whether the patient is low risk or high risk now let's see the criteria of risk patient is considered as low risk if the source of infection is hiv positive and after exposure if the patient remains asymptomatic with a low hiv rna titer and increased cd4 count then in these condition the patient is considered as low risk now exposure to the infection may occur through mucosa through a scratch or in contact with the thin and solid i repeat here solid needle patient is considered as a high risk patient if the source of infection is hiv positive and after exposure the patient shows increased hiv rna titer and decreased cd4 count the exposure may be a major splash or large area of contact or through a large bore hollow needle now if the source source hiv patient is known to have received one or more anti hiv regimen then the 
uh, the the virus become resistant to these drugs and so alternative hiv regimen including stavudin stavudin dadinosin abacavir and afavirenz these four drugs are used as alternative hiv regimen now drugs taken by the sore patient are generally avoided and the post exposure prophylaxis should be started as soon as possible preferentially between 1 to 2 hours of exposure now the prophylaxis after accidental sexual exposure also remains the same as that of needle stick injury now perinatal prophylaxis all hiv positive pregnant women should be started with the antiretroviral therapy immediately they are put on a three drug anti hiv regimen and the therapy is continued through the delivery and also in the postnatal period and this reduces or avoids the risk of vertical transmission of the infection from mother to the to the child now first line neco regimen for the pregnant women includes zidovudin lamivudin and nefirapin efivarens is teratogenic so it is avoided in the first trimester of pregnancy and pay, pay in uh, cases of breastfeeding and uh, in hiv infected females the breastfeeding is avoided because there is an increased chance of transmission of infection to the uh, child through breastfeeding so this is the short uh, short explanation of the post exposure prophylaxis of hiv infection the next lecture would be on the nsaids and antipyretic analgesics If you don't want to miss it please subscribe to our channel right now and do let us know in the comment box if you like our lectures or no and happy studying